Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off five four back at you in gloves off i'm professor we i'm here with dr dugas and we're touching base on the essence of the old Chinese medicine, the Didda Jiao, the Jiaos, the liniments that help people recover. And uh, the reason we're going to do that is, you know, number one, he's a doctor in Chinese medicine, but also a practitioner in the Chinese arts that deal a lot with not only conditioning, but what do you do to take care of a student or your own self after that? Doctor, how are we doing? We're doing good? Oh, it's great to be be back again. It's wonderful to see you. everything is going great down here in sunny Florida. It is starting to get a little what we call nice. It's not as hot. It's only in the 80s, and at night it's getting down into the 70s and the 60s. So everybody's looking forward to our winter. It dries us out, so we're like, yay. Absolutely. Well, here in Laredo, we're still in the hundreds. We had a little rain the other days, but the problem is that it kind of cools you down some parts of the day, and all of a sudden the humidity hits the next day. Right. So that's what we're dealing with because uh, that's what happened this past week. But we should start lowering the temperatures and going in the 90s within the next month and it'll kind of go with that. After that. Right. Right. People understand, you know, that there are places in the country that even though it's winter and fall, it's still, you know, blazing hot. Absolutely. Know. And a lot of people don't realize that. But with today's topic and, and, and uh, is the main question is, there's so many martial artists, and that's exactly what we're going to go, go, go towards, is, you know, there's a lot of conditioning, hitting the bags, striking the pads, you know, tie boxing, going with full strength, and people come back the next day, and they do it again, all of a sudden they get injured. So let's talk about recovery, let's talk about conditioning, let's talk about the old medicines and the lit- liniments that used to help people or martial artists prevail as they travel through their, their training. Now, it's interesting because there are, as, as you're aware, there's a lot of systems who don't think they condition. They think that hitting pads, kicking a heavy bag, hitting a heavy bag is not a form of like iron training. In other words, you know, they, they're not thinking hand, foot, you know, on something harder than their body, you know, because that's what we're doing. We're, we're dealing with, when we say the word conditioning in martial arts, we're thinking of two anatomical laws. It's called Wolf's Law and Davis's Law. When you put stress on your muscles and stress on your body, hitting pads, hitting a heavy bag, you're putting stress on all these biological mechanisms in your body. Your tissues will get harder, denser, stronger. The bones will get thicker, denser, and stronger. But what happens is when people are doing this, as you said, they overdo it and they forget that, you know, you need to recover and one of all of the old the old time guys would recover is they they they'd stick their hands in buckets full of brine, you know, and salt and minerals, you know, mineral salts. They knew this is good for pain. Now this is a Western thing, but what we're talking about here is when we get into the Chinese systems, you know, there is a collection of herbs that they've that you know are are known as dit da jiao. Dit, dit means to fall, da means to hit, and jiao is alcohol. So in other words, it means fall, strike, wine. It doesn't make any sense when you translate it. So what, what we usually say is trauma liniment, bruise liniment, you know, liniment, jiao. You hear the word jiao, that's become a buzzword, J-O-W or, or J-I-O, you know, jiao. It just means booze. So what you're doing is you're taking these herbs, you're taking these supplements, you're putting them in ethanol, you're soaking them for a period of time. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take them out of this container and put them in a smaller bottle. So what you need to understand is if you're training – you need to recover. This is an old Chinese way of recovery. You basically put this liquid on your body. I put this all over. I don't put it in my eyes, you know, but if I get hit in the head or if I'm doing a lot of bridging, you know, wrestler bridging, sometimes I, I irritate the top of my head because I'm sitting on it. I'll actually put it on my head too. But you rub it in. These herbs will help increase systemic circulation wherever you apply it. Look at my hands. Look how red my hands are getting. 
wherever you apply this, it's going to increase the circulation. If you're, you know, working hard, you've got a lot of lactic acid built up in your tissues. By applying this to those areas that are sore, you're going to help get rid of that lactic acid buildup. This is going to help you recover. This is going to help you feel better. Many of these formulas have painkillers, analgesics, and anti-inflammatories in them. Okay. But, you know, it's basically, people call this magic. It's not magic. All these things increase circulation. And again, circulation is the key to better health. If you have good circulation, you're not going to have, you know, very varying issues. It's when you have a stagnation issue, you have a health problem, mm -hmm. you know? And so in Chinese medicine, we're always thinking we want to move stuff, you know? And dude, just putting in the jaw on my hands is making me sweat. Why? This stuff is so powerful and moving that I put it on my hands. My whole body goes, hey, I know what you need. You know, you need to move even though I'm not moving, you know? Now, some of these are poisonous. You have to be careful. So you have, you know, you need to understand where did you get this? You know, what's, what's the background of the formula? A lot of people don't know. They send me these formulas because I read Chinese and I, I, I translate and fill these formulas. They are full of sometimes poisonous herbs and you have to be careful. You know, so there's, there are some caveats. Don't keep this stuff out where your pets can get at it. The pet, they might smell these herbs and lick, lick the jar and lick the container, this isn't good. This can actually kill your pet. So I always keep my medicines like up in the cupboard or I keep them in the fridge too. Why? Well, if you're doing a lot of hitting and impact training, if you're, you know, hitting heavy bags, you're hitting big pads with full power, you know, even if you wrap your hands, eventually your hands are going to get sore. Why? You, you know, you've put a lot of stress on those bones. So what's the first thing I do? Yeah. Okay. Some people will soak their hands, you know, and I'm not talking like iron palm people. I mean, that's a whole nother thing. We're talking like MMA boxing people. If you just, if you just went through 10 rounds of hitting, you know, pads with your trainer, I bet you your hands are a little sore. Why? Because you're really trying to hit those things. You're trying to develop, you know, optimal power. Well, this is what you need for optimal recovery. You know, they figured out combination of what blood moving herbs, you know, pain-killing herbs, things that open and make sure that circulation is open. You know, those are the big things in these formulas. This isn't a tonic formula. This isn't for, you know, this isn't ginseng. This is different, you know. And this version, you don't want to drink. Why? There's stuff in here that will make you sick. There are other versions that you can drink. And if you do drink them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, they don't taste very good, but they're going to help you. You know, all, all medicine is bitter, they say, right? You know, and the funny thing is these people figured this out thousands of years ago. You know, some of these formulas have been around for a very long time and they've been passed down through different people. I have a whole collection of formulas that people couldn't read because they're written in Chinese. And so they gave it to me and said, translate it for me. And I did. And all of these formulas, there's pretty much, there's like 10 herbs you always find in these formulas. There's like a, it's always, it's like, there's a base. You know, like right. cooking, like cooking. If, you know, some guys have a really good rub, like a dry rub or, or, or a wet rub, you know, they come up with these combinations of herbs and plants to, you know, for cooking. Well, they do the same thing in medicine. And a lot of the time, the herbs in cooking are used in medicine. So there's a lot of turmeric, clove, cinnamon in, you know, in here. Why? Cinnamon, when you put it in alcohol and rub it on your skin, it increases blood circulation in the area. It's a blood mover. You know, also smells good too. So, you know, hey, nothing wrong with, you know, smelling good and, and doing the job. You Absolutely. Can, can you explain, can you explain the difference between a balm and a liniment? What's the difference well, between? Them? When you're looking, when you're looking at medicine, you can, you can use different carrier methods because some people, they have an allergy to alcohol. In other words, if they put a, a, an ethanol based <laughs> liniment, this is, this has been basically it's spiced vodka. You're taking ethanol putting it into a container, you're adding this plant material and you're going to let it sit for a, a, you know, a stipulated period of time. Then after that, what you do is you, you extract the, the liquid, you strain out the, the herbs, you take the liquid and then you rub that liquid, you know, on the body. Okay. But be careful, you know, some liniments, again, they have no poisonous herbs and you can ingest them as well. But, some that are very strong, you have to be very careful. In other words, you got to know what you're taking. I mean, it's like anything. Do you do diligence? 
you know, but when people, if people are allergic to alcohol, then you can make what's called a bomb, like you mentioned, where a lot of people will take some kind of oil and then beeswax. And what they'll do is they'll put, they'll put these herbs, they'll probably grind them up a little better. They'll put them in this oil. They'll bring the heat up a little, not too much because you don't want to, oil can burn very easily. So a low heat over a long time and you extract the chemicals into the oil, you then strain out the, the herbs and then you take the beeswax, you add it into this hot oil and it will, it will create a bomb. It, you know, some people call it unguent, you know, it, it it's yeah. been, it's put in some kind of oil or petroleum jelly, you know, that kind of gooey, but petroleum, you got to be careful that those are carcinogens. So the natural way is using either sesame oil and beeswax or using olive oil and beeswax. And then they make a bomb. Same thing. It's, it's instead of having an, you know, an alcohol base, you've got an oil and wax base and you do the same thing. You would be taking this, this medicine, the bomb, and you would be rubbing it into the area you're having a problem with. Now, other people, they don't want oil. They don't want wax. You can use vinegar. You take the herbs, you soak them in vinegar for a period of months. And then what you do is you heat up that batch of vinegar and you cook the herbs. You take those herbs out, you add more vinegar to preserve it. Now you have a vinegar, what they call a vinegar-based jowl. A lot of the Buddhist groups, like the Shaolin formulas, those are vinegar-based. Why? Shaolin didn't kill any animals. So when you see formulas that have animals and animal parts and snakes and things, that's not a Shaolin formula. That's something else. You know, the monks would never kill anything to put it into medicine for people. They would use, you know, it would be vegetarian only. And that doesn't mean it's it's not as strong, you know, because sometimes these Shaolin formulas are double, they're double the size of a smaller formula that has animal parts in it. Right. It's just organic. You know, when, when I say animal parts, you're talking dried snakes, you're talking horns of different animals, you're talking bones of different animals. Now, I don't use any tiger bone in any of my formulations. It's illegal. You shouldn't be killing tigers for their bones. You don't need to. You know, why we put bones into these jowls is because we want calcium matrix. When you're training and putting stress on your body, you need to ingest more calcium and more minerals to help build the stronger bone. Well, if you put calcium matrix into this, you're going to pull out those components. And then when you rub it into these areas that you've been training on, you know, and again, we don't have to be punching. I had a friend who was a planking. He was a planking guy. He would plank for two hours every day. And the edges of his arms and his feet were getting really sore because, you know, he's on these things every day. He said, what can I do? And I go here. And I gave him a bottle. He goes, smells like curry. I go, yeah, it does. So he rubbed it on and dude, his pain went away. And now he, he doesn't feel any pain planking at all because now he's got this developed arm. He's put all this pressure you know, on his, from basically from his knuckle all the way to his elbow. And he said, my arms are bigger, they're thicker. You know, I, I feel really strong. I said, well, of course, you know, you're, you're applying Wolf's law and Davis's law to training. You know, and um, all, all those are great. How, how can somebody or where can somebody get them? Because the most common ones are the ones you buy, the red, the red jowl that comes in the little red bottle that's all over the yeah. place and you, so you, so forth. The five, you got the five photos. The five photos brand is pretty much that over-the-counter generic, like $10 jowl. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's clean, you know. But there's a lot of people that sell their jowls for just ridiculous amounts of money. You're like, wait a minute, dude, that's four ounces for $100? I mean, whoa, that's you – know, Usually a four ounce bottle is going to cost you like, you know, anywhere between like 30 and $40, you know, eight ounce bottles range from like, you know, 40, 48 to $60. You know, a lot of people will buy the kits, you know, why? Because when you really get into training and you realize how good this stuff works, you're going to go through it, you know, like quickly, like it does the job. And next thing you know, you know, your students, your friends, anybody you, 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 you allow them to try it, they're going to want it. So a lot of people will buy a kit. Why? Make a gallon. You know, why? You're going to, and trust me, if you're a serious trainer, you're going to go through that gallon in about a year, you know, and it's going to save you money. But where do you get these? Well, you can get them from various suppliers. You can get them from myself, you know, and if somebody has a formula from their teacher or master in Chinese and they can't read it, I can help you translate it. I don't sell these formulas. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't publish them. They're, they're, I, I don't do this. Why? Because it's not my formula to publish. You know, so 
I have people's formulas, but I don't, I don't publish them. They're, they're, they're nobody's business. You know? Right. But are these, yeah. uh, here's another question. Are, are the ingredients regional from area to area? You have like, say, oh. let's say you have that base, that, that triangular base, but then the other ones that come in, are those the ones that That's are? The so you see formulas from the North because there's certain herbs that are very famous from Northern, you know, Northern places. And then I say, I can read a form. I can look at a form. I can look at the herbs and tell you, oh, that's a Southern form. Why? Because they use these herbs in addition to, again, there's like a base. There's like six to 10 herbs that are in every single formula. And then they have these regional ones where, you know, they couldn't get certain ones because they, they didn't grow there, but they had something similar that would do a similar effect. See, that's the great thing about herbs. If I can't get a certain herb, I can get my hands on other herbs that are not the same, but they do the same action. In other words, if you need a blood moving herb, one of the best herbs for that is called Sanshi or Tianshi. It's radix pseudo ginseng. And it's, it, 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 it looks like a rock. It's not, it's a root that it takes three to seven years to grow up, but it looks like a, a knobby little rock. I've seen people break their tools, try to break, you know, crack this stuff open. So, you know, oh yeah, this is the number one, this is the number one herb, you know, and so if you get it and you got this herb, just that one herb is going to help you, you know, with the pain and with the blood, let alone if you have, you know, but again, Sanchi only grows in Yunnan. Yunnan is kind of in the middle, but if you go way north, they don't have Sanchi, but they have what's called um, red peony root. You see a lot more red peony root in those formulas. You see a lot more what's called Zulan. Zulan is bugleweed. It's, it's just a grass. It grows everywhere. That's a real big blood mover. So for the people that couldn't get certain regional herbs, they'd have these other ones. And so when you're trained, you know, I, I was trained both professionally and, and traditionally. Traditionally, I had an old herbalist teach me and he would say, look at this formula and look at it. He'd go, you see these herbs? He goes, yeah. He goes, that's from Sichuan. And, he, you know, okay, that's over kind of, you know, Southwestern. And then he goes, look at this. It's got all these weird herbs. He goes, that's from the North. They have, you know, that's from the North. And so then I kind of look, oh, yeah. And so then you get the styles. You get a hungar formula. Well, that's more southern. But then you get like a long fist. And most long fist comes from the north. And then you have these northern formulas. And the northern formulas traditionally are huge. They're big. Why? I don't know. In other words, they have many small amounts of herbs. But the, 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 the amount of herb is much bigger than a southern formula. Sure. Southern formulas, you know, 10 to 20 herbs. But, they, you know, the amounts are bigger. So you might have just a little bit of certain herb in the northern, but then, you know, you've got triple the amount in the south, but then you, you only have half the amount of the herb. So they're just doing ratios like it's chemistry. You know, you're trying to get a strong decoction. And when I say decoction, you need to pull the chemical out of the plant. How do you do that? Well, you either use water, alcohol, vinegar, or some kind of oil. Sure. You know, another and way. And that's or, and basically what you would see, you probably see the, you probably see those type of liniments in some of the herbs or in some of the stuff that comes in some of our Americana medicine. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's back in the day, turn of the century before, before the AMA got a hold of, you know, medicine in this country, there was a lot of people selling various, you know, homeopathic remedies, you know, more herbal remedies. And now science has proved that these herbs do actually what they're supposed to do. So it's funny how 5,000 years ago, the Chinese people figured out what these plants were and what they did. And then they figured out how they put them together. Remember, it's not just one herb. It's a collection. It's like a recipe. Some sure. herbs you have more of. Other herbs you only have a little bit of. You know, there's minerals. Like we use a lot of copper pyrite. Copper pyrite is great for injuries. Copper is good for, you know, is good for the body. So we actually put copper into the solution. So, you know, and people go, really? I go, well, it's not the copper you think. It's not the shiny copper. It's, it's more the raw mineral. You know, it looks like a, like a dull rock. It hasn't been, you know, put through a furnace and, you know, made to look all, this is, these are copper. Okay. See, this, this is, these are tools that people forget about when they're training their hands. And any of my friends that don't, you know, that do regular boxing and bash their hands, I always say that, you know, get a, get a pair of Baoding balls. You know, these are solid copper. You can have steel, you can have, you know, wood, you can have, you know, rock. Sure. Why? This kind you know, by opening and closing your hand, you're, you're going to be passively massaging all those tendons and bones. You know, so I do this every day. I do these exercises 
before, during, and after, you know, I'm hitting my hands. I hit my hands on a 75 pound bag of lead. People freak out. They go, lead, you're going to die. I go, no, no, no. Special bag. It's waterproof. There's waterproof vinyl. Nothing's coming out. If water doesn't get in or out of the bag, nothing else is going to get in and out of the bag. But lead is a dense material. So when I hit my bag, it doesn't rebound. You got to be careful when you're using iron and steel shot. Why? They're kind of springy. And if you hit, you can get a lot of, you know, like, sure. you know, it's like what we call reverb and too much reverb is going to travel up what the kinetic chain and get stuck in your, in the middle of your body. And you're going to have angina. You're going to think you're having a heart attack. You're not, you're just having angina pain. Why? There's too much stress on the pericardium. The pericardium is the, the muscular sac that surrounds your heart. And you can actually damage it by smashing your hands on things that are giving you back too, too much energy back. You're getting too much feedback. Absolutely. How do you, how do you prevent this? See, my teachers, they're like, we, we, we know you guys are going to go ape crap on that bag. So you know what? The teacher said, make sure to put the medicine on. <laughs> this mitigates all of your, uh, of your training mistakes. If you don't use medicine, you're going to get arthritis. You're going to get all kinds of nasty problems. Your hands aren't going to work. Okay. And even the high level karate guys, friends that I know, they, they, they buy medicines for me and other people. Why? Cause they know the value of this stuff, you know? And some of these yeah, guys absolutely have. Correct. Absolutely correct. And you see a lot of people, and there's a lot of systems that they look pretty, but you have to condition your hands. A lot of Chinese, a lot of Chinese arts, you have to condition your hands to hit. I you're remember. A, and you're, you're moving in a relaxed manner. That when you hit something hard, guess what? That's that's gonna come back. And if you hit it wrong and your hands aren't conditioned, they're gonna bust. That's it. Bust. Really. Like, Bye. I mean, most people the they, story. they tell people, hey, I've I've been in lots of street fights, and then you know you put the pads up and say, Okay, kids, show me what you got. And they go bang, and they have a boxer's fracture and, the, and their carpals come up over their wrist. You know, and you're like, Yeah, kid, you're you're yeah, whatever. That's probably like the most common injury I see is somebody punching or trying to break something without a conditioned fist. And it causes, you know, it causes carpal damage. Sure. You know, they either break in the hand or they break low and then they come up over the wrist bone. They, you know, and they're, it, it's a bad injury, you know, and a lot of times you have to have surgery to, to go in there and, you know, push everything back. And, and you get that from a lot of hot headed kids that think that walls aren't going to, they see too much uh, Bruce Lee breaking boards and they strike the wall because the parents didn't let them to go out. And guess what happened? And your hand looks like a basketball. Like, why'd you punch a wall? That's just silly. It's like, why punch a telephone pole? Absolutely. But you know, we're, we're we've seen way too many of those things that occur, but uh, what we're talking about, you know, and friends that did that, and you're like, okay. But uh, what, what we're talking about is conditioning the hands. And the best way to condition your hands is to have, not only good equipment for you to strike at, but for you to also have a good liniment or balm for you to use. And, and also uh, hand health, brother, hand health. Many people don't talk about hand health and they think, oh, your hands, you know, I don't have to worry. Dude, you, I am an acupuncture physician. I needle people for a living. If I can't hold on to these tiny little needles, I'm in a lot of trouble. And I can hold on to these tiny little needles with these meatball hands. So, hey, I'm doing something right. Again, safe, progressive training. Too many people, safe, sane, progressive, those three words sometimes don't enter anybody's brain. And they push it. <clears throat> and then what happens? Every boxer friend I know would tell me that their hands hurt after, after bag training, you know, the, the big bag. <clears throat> I give him a bottle of this stuff. I go, put it on after. Okay. A week later, he's hitting the bag and he realizes my hands don't hurt anymore. <clears throat> And he was amazed that that's all it took was using a liniment after training. There, there wasn't a big change in anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, the dramatic effects you can see using these medicines convinces you of their efficacy. <clears throat> yeah, you're absolutely correct. Now, for those out there that are, that are interested in, how can they get a hold of you? Where can they buy some? Um, how, how, which one? What, do you want them to buy a bottle? Do you want them to buy the, 
The okay. recipe, shoot. I have, I have many, many kits you can buy. If you're interested in getting a kit, I offer like from half a gallon all the way up to four gallons. Every one of my kits makes double. So if you want to try and make a gallon, order a half gallon. Why? I'm going to send you enough material to make at least one gallon, if not more. You can find me on the web at dalegas.com backslash shop. You can also call me or text me at 813-285-1895. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. I'm opening up a new acupuncture clinic in the next few weeks, and that's going to be praying mantis acupuncture and, you know, and Chinese medicine. You're going to see me, you know, online again, offering, you know, classes, Hakka mantis classes, conditioning, things like that. I have two formulas that I have the, what we call pre-made. In other words, they're already in the liquid. They're ready to go. My tiger exits the forest is an incredible liniment for shoulder injuries, for joint injuries, joint, you know, if you've got a bum elbow from either golf or tennis, I can help. You're on the computer all day. You're a programmer or, you know, you're, you, you're just, you, you use your fingers and hands all day. Tiger eggs the forest. Now, if you're a strength athlete or a competitor or any kind of martial artist, look into what I call my ghost hand. This is my ghost hand. The big difference is that it has camphor and menthol. There are a lot of people who like camphor and menthol. They are pain relievers. They, they open, they move stuff, and they also smell very good, which is funny because those are the two main ingredients in mothballs. So it's funny how mothballs in a liniment is attractive, but the mothballs by themselves are not. So I don't put mothballs in here. <laughs> no, I, I get a clean, you know, camphor and menthol, and I add it in. I don't, I don't add mothballs. That, that's synthetic chemical, you know, no. I try to source the cleanest herbs that I can find. Why? Because I don't just sell this stuff, guys. I use this stuff. You know, I use this stuff daily. I've helped, I've helped thousands of people, you know, mitigate their pain, you know, recover quicker, get back to their job. We're not talking just training. There are some people who get injured training and they can't go back to work because they have an ankle injury. Guess what? These can help with sprained ankles. I have herb soaks, you know, these herb soaks you can make to soak a bad elbow, to soak a bad wrist, to soak your, you know, your ankle, your foot. We can make poultices and put it on any joint, the neck. You know, I have many, many, many tools to help people get better faster without the use of synthetic chemicals or drugs. You know, these are natural drugs. It's herbal medicine. It's medicine. You know, it's not just a plant. It's not just one. These are complex formulas. You know, we get things in, in granule form. This is, this is my own. These are my own herbs, you know. I take this every day because I have pain. I have issues. You know, I've ruined my joints, you know, being an overactive lad when I was younger doing silly things. And now in my fifties, I have, you know, I have minor aches and pains. I don't have minor aches or pains because of herbs and also medical cannabis, but that's a whole nother discussion. You know, what we're, we're talking here is how can you use a liniment to help your training? Well, Use it after that, at least once. Most people, I say, hey, look, try it once after you train and, you know, put it on, you know, what, you know, what happens after you train? Oh, my elbows get sore. You know, my shoulders get sore. You know, my back, put on your back, you know, and then usually in a couple of days, they realize, hey, wait a minute. That was even better than if I took an Advil. I'm like, I know, because Advil is going to break down on your liver. They go back and whereas you're applying this to the area. You know, wherever your problem area is, that's going to get in there faster and the body's going to utilize it quicker. You know, why? Most people have very little problem with their skin. So transdermal medicines, in other words, bombs, liniments, you know, patches, you know, a lot of times you can get an injury patch. It looks like a Band-Aid. You peel it off, you slap it on, and it sticks. Why? They put the herbs in the adhesive and then your skin absorbs the herbs. And then, you know, those Absolutely. are common too. You know, back in the day, what they did is they took herbal, they took the herbs, ground them in a powder, mixed some dip touch out of it, made a paste, and they slapped the paste on you. And then they put a piece of cloth and then they tied something to keep the, to keep this thing on. You know, they don't have to do that now. They, they figured out, it, we put the extract of these herbs in the glue and all you got to do is peel off this bandage, slap it on, and it does the same thing, but it's a lot less messy. Because herbal mud, slapping herbal mud on and keeping it dry, it's kind of a pain in the tush. 
Absolutely. These are the easiest. These are the easiest. You know, liquids are the easiest. You just shake it up, apply it, you know, good to go. You, this fits anywhere. You don't have to have these big vats of medicine that you see in Kung Fu movies. No, 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 no. You know, 21st century. This is the 21st century. Nice little bottles. You don't have to worry because we put an orifice reducer in there, you know, like a hot sauce bottle. You're not going to pour the whole bottle out. <laughs> well, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to get some, we're going to have to get some. And, uh, no, but again, there, if, you're, if you're training, get some jowl. And I'm going to tell you why, because it, the benefits are great. I've used jowls from before. I have not used the docs, but we will use them. And, uh, Believe me, when you're training, when you're training hard, when you're training two, three times per week, like many people are, especially the serious players, they're doing countless times. They're doing reps on bags. They're hitting the bags as hard as they can. All of a sudden, they go back, and they're, the next day they want to do it again, get, get injured. This is the safest way for you guys to start recovering. This is also good. I have a lot of friends who do strongman competitions where they bend steel or they they take those huge 60 deep penny nails and they bend them like a hairpin. That puts an incredible amount of stress on your hands. And dude, my friends who do this go, you know, do you got anything? You know, I, my hands get sore. I'm like, well, hell yeah. You just rolled up a frying pan. Jesus. I think my hands hurt would hurt too. If I try to roll up a frying pan and I, you know, try the tiger, try this. And dude, these guys, I didn't know, but now I have a whole niche of customers who are steel benders. You know, they bend stuff. You know, rip cards. You know why, dude? You put all that stress on your hands and fingers; they get sore. You know, how do you get better? How do you get stronger? Well, the secret that we use in the Chinese systems, we use the jiao. Absolutely, that's our Absolutely. secret weapon. You know, that's why we we have harder hands with with less issue. Look, I don't have I have very little calluses. You know, I don't have that alligator skin look. My hands are as smooth as a baby's tush. You know, but then when I solidify my hand and all of a sudden people are like, my God, your hands are like rock. I go, yes, you know, soft when it needs to be, but also solid when I need it to be solid. Absolutely. Well, Doc, Doc, I want to thank you for explaining that to us and telling us a little bit more. And uh, folks out there, one more time, where can they reach you? They can reach me online, you know, com. you know, www.com. D A L E D U G A S dot com. And once you're there, click on shop. You will see all the herbs, you know, and things that I sell. And if they have any questions, like I said, give me a call. You can e you can email me at Dr. Dale. That's D R dot D A L E at Dale Dugas dot com. You know, or come find me on social media and contact me through through the social media outlets, guys. I'm pretty easy to find. Absolutely. Folks, until next time, much peace. Stay safe. See ya. Today, in America, more than 5.5 million men, women, and children train in a martial art regularly. Bui Tarun Academy has been serving Laredo for over 30 years now. Our adult classes are geared for producing the best in you, teaching you street-ready techniques. With the arts of Savat and Kinpo, you'll learn the traditions of these sciences of combat as passed down professor to student. Hello, everybody. My name is Senior Grandmaster Alfredo Bandalan, owner of BDP, Bandalan the Sea Parties. I'd like to say a few words on Grandmaster Paul Bitron. He's a man of great integrity, a man of great knowledge of martial art. He's a master of Savat and master of Iskrima. He's a man that can help you to become what you want to be. He's a man that teaches people how to be somebody in life, how to be, how to work the world how to be happy in this world. He's a man that I can say hold many, many integrity as well as in martial art. But I'd like to say 
This man has a radio station that's hunting all over the world. And he works with all kind of people, all walks of life. Now, all I, all I want to say that Paul Vitron is a man that can help people to be somebody in life. I'd like to say aloha, thank you. I am Grandmaster Michael Duran of Original Here on the Criminal Federation here in Vallejo, California. Professor Paul Boutron is an accomplished martial artist who has developed an understanding that as a caretaker in our martial arts, it is his responsibility to keep the art alive and in depth. He acknowledged that it is the students that give the art life. I hold his friendship and his continuing accomplishments in the art in the most highest regard. Thank you. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Give us a call for your free evaluation at 956-401-4868 or check out our website at savat.biz. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook.